What is going on guys and welcome back to another video and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this car spread effect inside of After Effects. So to get started with this the first thing we need to do is go up to the rotor brush tool and then go onto your footage here select it and then mask out your car. Once you've masked out the first frame, then we can go frame by frame, just making sure that all the rest of the frames are aligned with our mask. But if they're not, you can go ahead and fix them up as you go, but it looks like this is pretty accurate and I don't really need to change anything. So once you've gone through all your frames and your rotor brush looks to be pretty exact on your car, then we can go here and then hit freeze. And this is just gonna go ahead and freeze our rotor brush to all of our frames so they don't move around later on when we're working on the edit. All right, so now that the rotor brush is done, we can go ahead and close this layer. Now back inside of our main composition, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. So hitting control D, we'll duplicate that. And on the bottom layer, we can go ahead and delete that rotor brush. So we have our main background, so our footage that we originally had. And then on top of that is our rotor brush clip. So if I go ahead and solo this out, you can see we have this car masked out. Now let's go ahead and duplicate that rotor brushed clip. So this top one, I'm gonna hit Control D once again. So now we have two rotor brushed cars. And on the one in the middle is the one I'm gonna be adjusting here. I'm gonna go ahead and just change this layer color really quick to orange. So it's easier for you guys to see what layer I'm actually adjusting. So by selecting that middle layer, you can now see we have this like cursor in the middle and this is actually your anchor point. And what we need to do is move this anchor point or the car to that anchor point, either on like the front left or the back right and this is because we're going to have the car kind of rotate on that side and if it's in the middle or like right now if i open up the rotation and try to go ahead and rotate this car you can see what happens and this is just not the effect that we really want to go for here so yeah we want to go ahead and fix this so when we rotate it the car actually rotates on kind of that anchor point right now it's just rotating on the middle so the car is as you can see rotating around that anchor point and we don't want that to happen so to fix that we can hit a on our keyboard to bring up the anchor point position values and we can move this so that the car is sitting right on top of that anchor point so I'm just setting this anchor point to the front of the car here. So now when I go ahead and rotate this, you can see it actually rotates on that anchor point. So that's pretty much what we're going for here. Same thing if we move this anchor point to the back of it right here and then rotated it, same thing would happen just obviously. Now it's the back of the car that's kind of centered. But yeah, once you have your anchor point set up, so it's on one of the edges of the car, what we can do now is copy the anchor point position values to your actual position because obviously you don't want your car just to be floating in the air like this so with your anchor point opened you want to hit shift p and this will open up your position as well as the anchor and we just want to go ahead and copy these anchor position values to our position so selecting this and then just simply copy and pasting them so now it's the same values for both of them now as you can see the car is back where it should be now let's go ahead and hit r on our keyboard to bring up the rotation and let's set a keyframe on the very first frame then let's go to the end of that clip and then bring this rotation value either down. You can have it so it goes down, but I actually want to have the car go up. So I'm going to go negative like six for this first one. And then when we play this back, you can see it just slowly rotates up. But we'll go ahead and easy ease these by selecting them and then hitting F9. Or if you don't have that keyboard uh, shortcut, you can go into keyframe assistant and then hit easy ease. But then once you have those keyframes, you just want to select them, go into the graph editor, and then make sure you are in the value graph, or you can just make sure you have the auto select graph type. And let's just go ahead and create a graph that sort of looks like what I have here. But this really just depends on what style you're going for. So customize this to however you want it to look. I'm actually going to drag this keyframe over so it's not at the very end, maybe a little bit towards the middle here. So that animation happens a little bit quicker. There we go. That's looking pretty smooth. Now, obviously we need a few more cars here. So the only way to do that is by duplicating this even more. So I'm just going to hit control D a couple times here. So now I have, I think five different layers, one, two, three, four, five. So now we can go ahead and make our way down, adjusting these other frames. So this top one, we want to go ahead and leave alone because that's going to be a very top layer that we just did. So on the next one down, just go ahead and open up those rotation values by hitting R and then go to that very last keyframe and then change the rotation. Same thing for the next one. Open up your rotation, adjust this one. So you just go ahead and do that for the rest of the uh, clips you have, depending on how many you actually duplicated. And then once you finish that, lastly, what you wanna do is enable motion blur for those layers. And then as well, make sure motion blur is toggled on for your main composition. If you want, you can spread out these cars even more. So 
they're not super like close together. You can have them more set to kind of a gap in between, uh, depending on, once again, the style of this effect you're going for. Now, the last thing I'll go ahead and show you guys is if you wanted to bring these cars back down into the original state it was at, so this zero, I guess, for the rotation on all of them, the easiest way to do that is just by copying this rotation and pasting it onto all these different layers. So that looks pretty cool, but now I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth out those last keyframes. So selecting all of them and then going into the graph editor, we're just gonna bring these points more towards the middle. So we have kind of a harsher or faster speed ramp towards the middle of this animation. All right, now actually the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is adding some shake to this effect. Now, obviously this is up to you if you wanna add it or not, but I'm just gonna quickly show you guys how to use the shake and what it looks like with the effect fully finished. So I just went ahead and pre-composed all those layers into one layer. And right before this kind of animation starts to happen, I'm just going to split this by hitting Control Shift D. I'm actually going to be using my own shake presets that you can go ahead and download in the link in the description. There's tons of different presets that you get with this. You get all of these different shake presets and they're super easy to install and use. So once you have them installed, you can go ahead and just drag on whatever shake you want. But if you already have different shakes that you already like to use, then you're more than welcome to use like uh, sapphire shakes or red giant or really whatever you want to use um, but yeah if you have these installed then you just want to go ahead and apply one of them to the start of that layer so making sure that your cursor is at the start of that clip we can go ahead and drag in one of these shakes and then i'm just going to go ahead and enable motion blur and there we go as you can see that just adds a little bit more impact to this effect like i said earlier this is totally up to you if you actually want to use shake in this effect or you can obviously just leave it how it is but yeah that's pretty much it for this tutorial once again you can go ahead and download the shakes in the description below but if you guys did enjoy this video then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys on the next one peace out